Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over um, the ways you can solve this, some problems in a text function Excel worksheet assignment that you had. And you were provided this worksheet. And by the way, I've deleted some of the columns from the original worksheet that you saw just to kind of simplify this. But uh, basically, you had, a, uh, you had an Excel spreadsheet with um, quite a bit of data in here, a bunch of uh, people and, uh, and home prices and things like that. And I do have the directions, and the directions are right, you know, right in here. So they're going to be off screen in my recording, and I just want to kind of refer to these as I go. And let me pop that Excel back open. There we go. All right, so I'm going to look at the first thing. And the first thing uh, was uh, get the home sold data file and save it to your computer before performing the subsequent steps. Okay, so I've got that data. I saved it to my computer and opened it up in Excel so I can start working away on it. Ne and okay, the first real problem is next to the first name column, next to the F name column, create a new column called full name. All right, so let me just insert here. I'm going to create a column called full name. Give myself room to work. Um, and combine the last name and the first names with initial together. Okay, so uh, someone had a question. Do you want to do last name, comma, space, first name, initial, or do you want to do first name, initial, last name? Either was cool with me. Um, just I wanted to see use that concatenate function. Um, note, there's a note for this step. There are some spaces included with the text, so research and use the trim function to clean it up. The trim function is a pretty simple function, and if you looked it up on Excel Help, so I could just click my little Help button up here, it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. I could type in trim, and then I can uh, trim spaces for Excel, remove all leading and trailing extra spaces. So I could click on this and I can read how the trim function works. It's actually opening up a web page in my other monitor, which will explain all of that. So yeah, little help is nice. All right, so basically I just need to join these names together. Now, I can do that in a couple ways. I can use the concatenate function. I'm first, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm gonna do this without the trim function, just so you can see what'll happen. I'll use concatenate and I'll take uh, the cell in contents of B2, comma, the contents of A2, close the parentheses, press enter. And we can start to see the problems that I'm faced with is there's extraneous spaces in here that are causing me a little bit of grief. Um, I'm kind of curious, what if I did this a slightly different way? What if I did A2, comma, quote, comma, space, quote, comma, B2. So basically now I'm going to take last name, comma, space, first name, initial. And we get a similar problem because of those extraneous spaces. And that's why the trim function is pretty nice. And so the way I would use the trim function in this situation, let me go ahead and zoom in really nice here. So we can see this carefully. So how I would use trim is I would trim A2 because it's clearly causing me some problems. Um, B2 may or may not be causing me problems, but at the very least I could put a trim around A2. And uh, now, well, I'll go ahead and trim B2 also, just so I can be consistent. There we go. So now I'm concatenating the trimmed version of their last name a comma and a space and a trimmed version of their first name. Press enter. My results are a lot more pleasant to look at without all those extraneous spaces in there. And obviously you can do first name, space, last name also. All right, that takes care of that step. Next to the full name column, create a new column called initial and extract the user's middle initial from the F name field. Note, not everybody has a middle initial. middle initial. I'm going to hide this full name column so that way it doesn't get in my way and I can see all the stuff in the in this recording here. So basically now I want just that middle initial. This shouldn't be too bad as long as we can determine some information about our data. Um, here's what we might get into a problem with is not everybody has a middle initial. People that do have a middle initial, how are they different than people that don't have a middle initial? Well, people with a middle initial have a space, okay? So Robert space A, Joshua space L, Patricia space A, but Aaron, no space. Um, who else doesn't have an initial? Almost everybody has an initial. Here we go, Bruce doesn't have an initial, so no space there. So I want to find people that only have a space, okay? Well, what if I looked for a space? 
equals find, find the space within the name. Let's see what that gets me. And let me just center this for now, just so my numbers stand out right in the middle. And I'll just autofill a few of them. Wow, everybody's getting a space, including Aaron. That's because, remember, I've got extraneous spaces here. So what if I only looked for a space in the trimmed version? Hmm, interesting. So now we can kind of start to determine there's only some people that have a space or not. And then we could use that, that understanding in order to apply the appropriate result to only some of our uh, people in the list. So some folks get a number and some don't. And we happen to know that the count function will count cells with numbers in them. So let's try this. Let me modify this now. equals count. Counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. If the count of this exact find, okay, well, let me just do a count here first just so we can see what that result is. So I'm going to count that. Notice now we get ones for people with an initial and zeros for people with no initial. There's constants there with no initial. So the count function is great for counting cells with numbers, and we had cells with numbers, and some had that sharp you know, a hash mark value because there was no value. So the count function is really useful for us here. So I'm counting cells that have numbers in them, and the cells that have numbers in them are the cells that have spaces in them. Okay, so now it's simply an if function. Okay, so I'm going to do an if. If the count of the finding of the spaces produces something greater than one. Actually, I guess we should say greater than zero, or we could just say equals one. How about equals one? If that's true, then I want to do um, the middle initial. How do I get the middle initial? Well, since the middle initial is at the very end of the trimmed version, I could just do the right of the trimmed version of the name, uh, I'll just type in by hand, B2, for one character. And I think that finished, that one more parentheses. Got a lot of parentheses in here. I am using the color coding of the parentheses to help me out. Press my Enter key, middle initial of A. Oops, I've got some falses. I forgot my false scenario. Easy to fix. So after, right here. Oops, nope, it has to be right in this area. I need to be in my if function comma and then if they don't have an initial I'll just do an empty set of quotes so just quote quote that'll be fine okay and that solves that problem oops I want to autofill this down for everybody so I'll just drag that okay so now we have the middle initial for everybody and let's it's a long function and it's and obviously it's made to look even longer because of all those sets of parentheses and I kind of started from the inside working out. First, I was just curious about my data. So I used a find function to answer a couple questions. And the find function, finding a space in the trimmed version, that let me know if they had a space or not. And if they had a space, that was the big clue that they had a middle initial. Now, the result of a find function is a numeric value. So if they had a space, then they had a numeric value. And the count function is fantastic for counting cells with numeric values. So I counted cells with numeric values. And if the count of the cells with numeric values produced a 1, meaning it contained a number, then I could get the initial from the right side of the text string. Otherwise, it was just a matter of putting in an empty cell. So that's the middle initial part. Now you had a couple other things to do with this um, worksheet also, and I think I'll pick that up in another video.